Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Tanks and today I've got a few, well it's going to be a slightly different video, today I'm going to be doing another tips and tricks video and today the focus is going to be on, I'm just going to pause the replay for a second, the focus is going to be on how to actively scout and today we're watching the Haz Attack one in his bat chat 25 T. I was going to say AP then, it's not the AP, it's the tier 10 bat chat. Now he's platooned up with an AMX 50B and an Object 261. And in this game he is going to do some pretty much perfect example of active scouting. I mean I could have used one of my replays but I thought, no, screw it. Um, I'm going to call him Has. Has does so much better in this game than I have in mine. And... Um, yeah, just so any of you guys who are a little bit cautious, uh, um, a little don't really know how to active scout. Well, it's not really not know how, but um, the reasons why you would do it and why um, it's sometimes better than passive scouting. Now, first of all, before we just jump into the replay, I'll just explain the difference to, to those of you who don't know what it is. Passive scouting is where you go up here, especially on this map, Prokhorovka. Well, fire is salient, but Prokhorovka. Um, you sit in the bush at E1, over there, you sit in that bush, you wait for things to get spotted, you spot them, things do damage, whoop de doo Active scouting is what you're about to see has do here. Active scouting is where you don't stop, you use the maneuverability of the tank, poke over ridge lines, spot enemy tanks, fall back, see what your team can do, and then wait until you're unspotted, then go for it all again. So yeah, it's pretty much... What I'm gonna say and then let's just have a look what happens and I'll point out some of the um, key important points Sorry if I sound a bit bunged up. I've got like a half cold at the minute. I don't really know what it is. It's like It's a bit there yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so there we go. You see he makes his first spot spots three enemy tanks spots T54 E1 an M46 crew pan and an uh, T28 prototype Obviously to do active scouting really well and there you see he, the um, the artillery on his platoon in the object 261 puts a massive, massive 772 damage hit into that um, that uh, what was it? It was the T28 Pro, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, there you see that um, has takes a hit from the bat chat, which is annoying, but you, you, it can't be helped. That is the danger with active scouting. Obviously, you've got to poke up to where enemy tanks can see you, but you can see them. Now, why would you actively scout over passively scout? Something like the Bat Chat in a tier 10 medium tank, if you... I mean, the Bat Chat is a bit of an exception, because um, you probably... Um, the camouflage is really, really good on the tank. But, if you're in something like a tier 10 medium tank um, that's maybe not got quite as good camo, or any other tank, really, that hasn't got quite as good camo, um, active scouting could be for you, because... If you sit in a bush and you get spotted, obviously you've got to build momentum again. And unless you've got crazy, crazy, crazy horsepower per ton, and the bush is quite conveniently located where you can drop back over ridge line or something like that, you're probably going to take a hell of a lot of hit points worth of damage because you can't build that momentum instantaneously. So you're sat there for a little while, gives the enemy tanks a chance to aim, and they fire. And usually, once um, oh that was a Nasty hash around there from the Centurion Action 10. Usually, once you've um, um, been into that bush, enemy artillery or enemy tank destroyers, something like that, will have an eye on that bush. And unless there's various bushes that you can go to, there's not really a lot I can do. And there you go, 1,309 spotting damage on the Leopard. Very, very nice there. Um, yeah, like I was saying, um, if you go up into the same bush again and get spotted again, there's it's more than likely that things are already going to be pre-aimed on that location. And then, like I said before, with where you've got where you stopped, where you've got no momentum, if you, things are already aimed and you get spotted, by the time you know, because it's sixth sense goes off three seconds later, by the time you know, you probably have taken half the hit points of your vehicle, if not more, and possibly died. Another point um, about active scouting is you obviously need a fast tank um, if you go up there and do that in an E100 you're gonna get tracked you're gonna take loads of damage and then by the time you're gonna fall down you're gonna be not looking very good um, another thing that really really helps is 
uber view range. When I what I mean by uber view range or uber excellent view range, just outstanding view range. Yes, you can have 445 meters view range, but if you're going to really active scout quite well, you're probably going to want more than that. And that's because once you get over again, quite a few of you might know this. But once you get over 445 meters view range. That's the maximum that you can spot enemy vehicles. But, if you've got, say you've got, there's something sitting in a bush at 300 meters. If you've got 400 meters view range, um, you're only getting rid of uh, like 25% of his camo rating, because you can see 25% past him. If you've got 500 meters view range, I can't do the maths, because I'm stupid, but you're, you're getting that much more view range past him so getting rid of his camo that much so if you're doing active scouting and you're only capture, catching the enemies for like a, a glimpse of a second they're not having a chance to fire to reduce their camo rating they've still got probably their best camo rating if you can get just the highest amount of view range you possibly possibly can that means that you're going to get rid of some of their camo rating and you're actually um, going to be able to spot them at longer ranges which is what you want because you don't want to be hanging around um, something else, do not try and active scout with binoculars. It does not work. You will get killed very, very quickly. Use kited optics, try and use everything you possibly can to get your um, view range up. So now there's a tool tip in the garage that actually tells you how to get your view range up. So vents, um, brothers in arms, coated optics, don't use binos like I said. Um, you can also use recon as situational awareness and just a premium consumable as well. That's very, very very important but again this is that's more for players who are slightly well not slightly more experienced but you do have to sacrifice either a fire extinguisher or a first aid kit for it never ever sacrifice a um a oh what's it called 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 a, for, a, a repair kit because just in case on your first run somebody snapshots you you get tracked and then you are stuck but anyway, I've not been talking a lot about the replay, so what's happened? Well, Haz has managed to pick up 7,001 assistance damage, and he fired, he's only fired um, two shots this game at the IS-3 because he had an opportunity to fire. That's something you need to do, especially when active scouting as well, is not be afraid to fire if you need to, because obviously you're probably going to get spotted anyway, because you're on the move, you're charging around you're probably going to be spotted anyway and i like what has does here he sees the 100 fire and he knows he can go in and assassinate that's something that is awesome about the bat chat is such a good assassin he also gets another 350 damage um assistance damage on that uh panzer 7 there and onto one of the um final points about active scouting obviously you don't need to you honestly you really don't need to but if you are platooned up with players um, artillery especially you can get some really really good results because you can if you especially if you're on voice comms to them you can say can you target this guy can you target this guy also really really big point I'm not really sure if um if has been doing it this game but really really big point is use your T key what this does is when you're hovering over an enemy tank so when you've got the red outline of an enemy tank if you press your T key like you saw him do there it will request fire at the enemy tank this tells your team, um, even if you're not on voice comms with them, this tells your team that you've just spotted them and you want somebody to shoot them. And, I mean, it doesn't work all the time, because obviously some people are just stupid and ignorant and will shoot whatever they want to shoot. But better players, usually, not always, better players will usually go, that guy needs help, he's requested fire, I'm going to shoot him. Especially artillery. So... This is the first time we've actually properly seen um, Has used the bat chat for the gun. Unfortunately, there he does get finished off the enemy artillery. See, he stays still for too long. That's the, the trouble with active scouting. He stayed still for too long. But even there, at the end, he manages to get four. What was that? Four hundred and seven assistance damage on the Panzer Seven, and one hundred and ninety-nine more on the T fifty four E one, putting his assistance damage total up to nine thousand two hundred and thirty-one. All from active scouting he didn't sit in a bush once he well actually that's a lie he sat in a bush over here for like half a minute but he didn't spot anything so you know now I'm not saying all of you go out 
get rid of the camo net in your um, light tank, get rid of the binos, chuck optics on it, set it up as an active scout. I'm not saying do that. This is just a video to explain to you if you do want to start active scouting, just little tip, like the video will say, little tips and tricks on what you need to do. Um, just little things that mean you're not gonna your first time, you're not gonna go up and just die instantly. It's it's just it's a just so to try and help and things like that. So I hope you have enjoyed this video, guys, or found it helpful. Um, I really really appreciate it if you do leave the video a like if you've enjoyed the video. Um, please subscribe as well if you're. Uh, new to the channel, I really really appreciate that too. And um, let's go take a very quick look at the post game stats. So there we go guys, that was the Hazatek one in his batch at 25T. He got a scout medal for spotting, uh, what is it, more than 9 vehicles and also a patrol duty medal for allowing the team to damage at least 6 enemy vehicles that have been spotted by him. Um, so yeah, and they're only to be spotted by you at the time of the damage done. So in the end, he did the 9,000. Well, where is it? There, 9,231 assistance damage. He also did 1,965 regular damage. Like I said before, you can't be afraid to fire a gun, especially towards the end of the game, when there's less tanks on each team. If you need to assassinate someone, like the bat chat is beautiful for this because it can just assassinate people so so well, especially towards the end of the game. If you can keep your hit points, um, you can use them at the end of the game to your advantage. And take out enemy tanks like he took out the E100, like he put a lot of damage into the um, T54 E1 as well, just to, you know, get those tanks out that are in awkward positions for your team to be able to take out. Um, so yeah, so a big shout out to his artillery who did 2,500 damage. I would assume to pretty much everything that he spotted. Um, as well as that, he also made 71,000 credits profit that game. Obviously, he did have a um, premium consumable, so that's one of the reasons why he would have made more. Um, which would have been a 32,000 credit profit with a standard account. He made a metric butt ton of XP, like you do for spotting tanks. But his WN8 wouldn't have been that much, which is something that puts puts people off at active scouting a lot. Because, uh, I mean... There's nothing wrong with liking your stats, and I mean, I like having good stats, it's just a thing. But, some people really do read too much into their stats, and they won't active scout because they're like, Oh no, I don't want to, it'll ruin, don't ruin that. If that's going to be the best game you're going to have, because you're going to be active scouting, do it. Don't worry about your WNA. If you've played thousands of games, one game doesn't make a difference. And you'll feel so much better for act actually moving about rather than on a map like Prokhorovka. Just sitting there, camping at the back, waiting for other people to spot. And then moaning at your team that nobody's spot, you've just been spotted and you've died. So yeah, that's probably a lot better. It's just my opinion. He fired nine shots, hit all nine and penetrated six, doing 1,965 damage. And yeah, like I said before guys, I really hope you have enjoyed this video I really hope this video has helped at all if I have missed anything which I probably have missed so much because I'm useless like that please let me know in the comments down below let me know in the comments as well what you think of these types of videos the tips and tricks videos and yeah on that not a lot else to say please subscribe please like thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you next time